Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Eagles Film Room here on Philly Sports Network with myself, Liam Jenkins. With the Garrett Blunt out of the picture, the Eagles have a very interesting backfield situation as they head in towards next season. Headlined by Jay Ajayi and Corey Clement, many have debated whether or not the team will aim to replace the role that Blunt left behind in his lone year with the team. Philly's sudden interest in LSU star Darius Geis should give us a firm indication, but how would the LSU product fit in with the Super Bowl champions? It's time to turn to the film and find out. Now the one thing you'll hear with Darius Geis is that he missed a part of the 2017 season, so for the most part many don't regard his 2017 tape anywhere near as valuable as the one from the year before. But even despite missing the opening part of the season, he still started 11 of the remaining 12 games, rushing for 1,251 yards and 11 touchdowns. And with tape like this, it's not exactly difficult to see why. Guys is a human bowling ball. Even through contact, through tackles, and in the midst of a trenches showdown, he can still retain such a low center of gravity and has the drive and willpower to just push through anyone that stands in his path. It's a barreling display every time Guys touches the ball, and it makes him one of the most electrifying prospects in this year's draft. There is no one that thrives through contact more than the LSU running back and that's terrifying to say given that he was one supposedly injured and a little bit banged up and two that he's a running back and in between those tackles guys that typically nowadays focus on finesse and being elusive and multi-dimensional guys is a throwback to those older style running backs that just want to punish any defender that stands in their way. What's even more shocking is that even on outside plays and zonal rushes he can still deliver that same level of ferocity. Look Look at the sheer strength of that stiff arm given to the Auburn defender. He runs the sweep, takes a snap from under centre, waits for his block, cuts inside very well and the moment he senses his safety coming down over the top, bang into the face mask. That is an authoritative play for a running back who just runs for an 11 yard gain and makes a monstrous first down. But his cut across the crease is even more impressive. It takes a lot to bring guys down and if a defender is going to tackle him from an angle or aim for the legs, you're not going to have much success. Unlike most running backs, tacklers need to be aware of how shifty he can be with his feet. You've got to aim for that upper body or he's going to do things exactly like he did to Ole Miss and put up 276 yards worth of rushing attack. One of the most talked about traits in the Citrus Bowl MVP's catalogue is his vision and it's easy to see why with plays like this against the Florida Gators. Making three distinct cuts behind the lead blocker, he pulls outside then throws his body weight back through the middle, driving into contact, it takes three defenders to bring him down and when you've got that level of physicality mixed with a great understanding of the game, you can be very one difficult cat to tackle. Guys waits for his block and then engages the second gear to drive forward for a first down and it's not the only time we saw that. Now it's not perfect and it's going to take some developing at the next level. For instance here, there's a gaping hole in the Ole Miss defense and instead of driving through it, he follows his blocks, which is what he's taught to do in all fairness, and picks up a slightly smaller gain instead of the home run. But on screens, it can be seen just as visibly. He pulls the dead play back inside the sideline and drives forward for a 14 yard gain and a first down. That's an incredibly tricky thing to do, to pull that play back in, dodge a tackle and then drive forward past the chains, you don't see many backs do that and when he gets into the open field, the way he can accelerate and still throw opposing defenders off is just remarkable. It's not like he gets to the second level and it's all about ball protection or the acceleration, it's the same back throughout the play, whether it's a screen, whether it's a home run hit or whether it's a short yardage attempt, he's always going to be tricky to bring down, barrel down on you like a freight train and have a great understanding understanding of the game and almost a patience where it seems the game is already slowed down for him to make those quick decisions. At 5'10", 212 pounds, what we normally see with bigger running backs is a sacrifice of speed in exchange for that sheer thump that they provide. That's not the case with the pride of Baton Rouge, who could still provide some great burst through the trenches, which is why so many defenders often smother him to try and extinguish that fire before it even has a chance to run a blaze. But when he does break free, it can be problematic, and he has no problem bouncing to the outside to find those extra yards. Now with great leg strength and an incredible amount of balance, he's able to really push off those tackles and find some extra room. And we see this again and again and again. And he's one of those backs where they'll just keep throwing up the middle until eventually something like this happens.
happens. And when the motors are on, very few people are going to catch him. A 449 40-yard dash may not sound intimidating, but it's that quick acceleration which will turn any big gain into a home run very quick. But one of the things the Eagles often ask of their backs and why JJ was brought in to begin with is pass protection. They need to help keep Carson Wentz upright, especially on those play-action looks. Now look at number five here, delivers a real punch to the opposing defensive lineman and that should be a touchdown but let's be honest the LSU quarterback wasn't the most accurate of passes this year. But again, Notre Dame throw a great pass rush and guys trailed it all the way to the outside and at this point he's physically pushing him towards the sideline. He's gaining traction and this buys just enough time for the long ball to be delivered but you know, no surprise it goes out of bounds. On this one again, guys on the outside here protecting an edge rusher. The quarterback gets hit, but it's through no fault of the running back. So what about as a receiving option? Well, he ticks that box as well, Eagles fans. There is nobody that was going to stop guys scoring on this play. A quick cut when he's got the ball after a smooth little Z spot over the middle, and he's able to shift his way inside, lower the head, and drive into the end zone. Nobody wants to stand between guys and where he wants to be, and that is what makes him such a dangerous dangerous prospect to keep an eye on here again the same sort of little slant over the middle and he then drives forward for extra yards and picks up a six yard reception to move the chain so what have we learned all in all guys is an absolute menace out of the backfield and there's uh... So what have we learned? Well, it's not hard to see why the Eagles would take a severe interest in guys given their draft status and just how dominant he's been the most terrified So what have we learned? So what have we learned? Well, it's not hard to understand the Eagles' severe interest in Geist, just as it's not difficult to imagine him suiting up in Midnight Green. He would tick all of the boxes that Blunt left behind and still add some versatility and some explosiveness behind him as well. What's really, really scary, however, is that if this was tape that's been tarnished with injury, that he wasn't 100%, that his motor wasn't quite where it should be, did he really want to analyse 2016? Was this not good enough already? If that's the case, then Geist is easily one of the top running back prospects in this year's draft. Maybe even the best if you're going off 2016 tape alone. But I'll leave the rest to you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you've liked this video, please hit that thumb. Let's get it to 100 likes and we'll get another film ring prospect out before the end of next week. As a second note as well, I have published my free NFL draft guide containing scouting reports on 40 cornerbacks, all of the combine invitees. It is absolutely free to download. I'll leave a link in the description as well and that has been the main reason why I haven't been uploading as frequently because with two jobs and doing that as well it kind of took it out of me a bit and uh, we're going to try and get back to a regular schedule now so thank you so much for sticking around I uh, hope you enjoy this content and we'll see you soon